fifth category of questions is called analyzing relationships among ideas. And this category includes a variety of questions much larger than the categories we talked about before, but there are two most common types of questions which I'd like to talk about. First is uh, the article best supports which of the following conclusions. And for that type of question, you want to think about the conclusion that the author drew herself and which of the four choices they've given you actually connects with that conclusion. Secondly, as you look at the four choices, think about eliminating those which, while they may be true in the world, the real world, they are not supported by the evidence provided by the author. The second type of question here is which step occurs first? So these are questions that have to do with time. The author's providing um, information about events that happened over time. They may or may not be presented in the order in which they occurred. So you need to pay attention to clues offered by the author that tell you when they happen, dates, times, or just the sequence of the sentences, and how the sentences connect. Those are the two most common questions. Let's take a look at some examples, or one example at least, of each of those types of questions. Here's a, an essay um, called 365 Days, 365 Plays, in which uh, the writer describes these plays written by Susan Laurie Parks, one for each day of the year, and the saga of how these were actually produced and the sort of the journey that the writer went through to get them produced eventually settling on the idea of having them acted out by a whole bunch of different groups. I'll highlight here um, middle school classes, social service organizations, nursing homes, a mayor's office, a roller derby team, okay, all kinds of different groups that were not professional actors. And it was in that way in which uh, she actually got all of these plays produced and how it revealed this great interest among the population of um, actually doing acting rather than focusing on just professional actors. So we come to this question. Information presented in the passage best supports which of the following conclusions. So you wanna think about which of these four things actually connects with the theme I just talked about. Um, a, where a play is staged is frequently more important than the content. So where is the key word, right? Whether it's done in Los Angeles versus New York, et cetera, is more important than what's in it. No, that is not a point that the writer's making. Location isn't a theme. B, many people have the desire and ability for artistic expression. Okay, so this gets at the point uh, that the writer makes about all these different groups that people who aren't actually professional actors who have an interest in presenting these plays. So B is clearly a better choice than A. C, a major shortcoming of most plays is their failure to address controversial themes. Well, that may be true, but it's not a point that the writer makes at all. So there's nothing that supports this as a conclusion for this article. So C is not a good choice compared to B. And then D, shorter plays are generally more successful than longer performances. Maybe, maybe not. Again, not something that the writer talks about. So you can see how B is the only choice that's connected with the actual conclusion and theme that the writer is addressing in this piece. Let's take a look at the sequence um, question as an example. 
Yeah, we're going back now to the article about Ibn Battuta, which talks about where he went on his journeys. And sure enough, there's a question that has to do with the sequence of his visits. Which of the following lists the correct order of Ibn Battuta's first visits to the countries and regions listed below? So you have four different choices, each of which has four different sequences. So notice that the first one has him going to Egypt and the Middle East first. The second one has him going to India and the Maldive Islands first. The third one has him going to Mali and Spain first. And the fourth one has him going to China and Southeast Asia first. So he had to have started in one of these four places. And because they're all different, it means once you discover whether he went to Egypt or India or Mali or China to begin, you will have found the right answer. Okay. So as you go back and you tell, we look at this thing, we hear about this introductory information about this guy who lived a long time ago and went on these trips. Then it gets into where he was born and he was going to be a lawyer. And then things changed when he went to Mecca when he was 21. Took him across North Africa through Egypt and the ruins of the lighthouse in Alexandria. A stranger asked him to visit his brother in India. So right away we see where he went first. Mecca, and Egypt. And we go back here and we see Egypt and the Middle East. You'd have to know that Mecca was in the Middle East. But even if you didn't know that, you see Egypt here. And you know that Egypt is different than India or Mali or China. 